Conversations in Education with Superintendent Narvaez. Welcome to our second episode of Conversations in Education. I'm Superintendent Beth Narvez. One of the bold goals of our strategic operating plan is reaching 100% college acceptance for our students by the year 2020. Today, we will share stories of some of our college-bound seniors to understand their unique journeys, including the application process, financing, education, acceptance, the value of a postgraduate year, transitioning to a college culture from high school, the value of internships, and being a first-generation college student. I am so excited to welcome our special guests today. We welcome here Jocelyn Arroyo, who is a 2015 graduate of Pathways Academy of Technology who matriculated to Wesleyan University. Tanya Gray, a college-bound senior from our Culinary Arts Academy, and she is a first-generation college student and winner of the 2016 Fox Scholarship. Shamar Richards is a senior and Hartford Promise Scholar and Hartford Public High School's Law and Government Academy student, a senior, who has been accepted to several colleges, but who's also considering a postgraduate year at a college preparatory high school. Um, and Jasmine Brown, a senior at Hartford Public High School's Academy of Engineering and Green Technology, and an intern and project lead for the electronic vehicle EV charging stations project here in Hartford. I'm so glad to have you on the show. Thank you all for being here. I already was bragging about you. I said, okay, I'm about to tape my second episode. I have students. We so love to hear the voices of our students. And so we're gonna talk today about your journeys to college. Um, three of you are heading off to college next year. One of you, Jocelyn, you've already made the journey. You're a freshman at Wesleyan University. So we want you to teach us about how you did it, right? And how you're making plans um, for the next year and for you for the rest of your college career and how you transition from HPS into college. So first, Jasmine, I want to start with you. Uh, have you decided which college you'll attend? And if you did, like, how'd you make that decision? Okay, so yes, I have decided what co which college I will attend. I'm going to attend Rochester Institute of Technology in the fall. And basically, I made that decision based upon my financial aid mm. package and also what the schools have to offer that I was accepted to. Yeah, mm -hmm. so what were you looking for? Like, you know, Rochester, like why, why, why Rochester? So what, what is it that you were looking for in that school that you said, yep, yeah, that's it? Okay, they gave me a really nice financial aid package mm -hmm. so I won't have to take out too many loans next year. And also, they offer my major computer engineering, engineering and it's a technology-based college, so that's why I chose that school. Sounds like it's a great match. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Shamar, how about for you? To what colleges have you been accepted and do you know where you'll attend next year? I've been accepted to Providence College, um, University of Connecticut, Norwich University, Southern Connecticut, um, Central Connecticut, and Western Connecticut. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot of schools. It mm -hmm. seems like students are applying to a lot of schools now, nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's better to have options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, options was, options are my best friend, so. <laughs> I love <yeah>. that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are you thinking? I mean, that's a lot of options. Um, two colleges, I brought it down to two colleges. Um, yeah. The two are Norwich University and um, Westfield State University. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. How do you think you'll go about your decision-making process? Um, well, Westfield is close to home. Yep. Norwich isn't. It's in Vermont. Mm. But, you know, it'll give me a chance to be in a new environment and adapt. So I'm looking forward to both. Yeah, great. Thanks for telling us your story. How about you, Tanya? First, I want to congratulate you on Thank winning you. the Fox Scholarship. Yeah. So how'd that come about? Um, and can you also talk about the college funding experience? You know, we heard from Jasmine that that was part of her decision, yeah. right? A great financial aid package. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the Fox Scholarship and then how you're <laughs> thinking about financial 
implications of, of funding, mm -hmm. really, yeah. your college education. The Fox Scholarship was pretty cool. I have met with uh, the president of the, uh, the uh, charter of the Fox Scholarship, and he came and he talked to us mm -hmm. about how long it's been a part of Hartford and just blessing kids' lives, you know, for m m many years now. And I was, uh, I was pr really happy to write the essays and to, I took myself on a journey by, you know, you really have to think about these essays and stuff mm -hmm. and to win it at the end. It, it, it feels like a dream. It really does. And um, the financial aid package for college is really important to me. First generation of college, you know, um, mm. my mom, you, we, she uh, never attended uh, college in the United States because they were not, uh, uh, you know, uh, she's not from here. Mm -hmm. So uh, she was pretty excited when I told I her that uh, UConn offered me a great financial aid package. She was always on my toes. Let me know what's going on. It's like, I'll keep you in the loop. So yes, it's very important. Scholarships, oh my, I can't emphasize how much scholarship, uh, scholarships are important. So yeah, that was really the breaking ground for me. Yeah. So congratulations, oh, you're going you. to UConn yes, in the fall. I will. That's excellent. How'd you make that decision? I, uh, between UConn and Augustana College in Rock Island, Illinois, is where my two uh, schools that I had my yeah. uh, full my eyes on. And um, I looked at UConn and I looked at my mom and she said, <laughs> UConn, and I said, okay, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be close to home. I'll be in the state. And I said, you can't, I'll make that decision, and I chose you can't. From a mom's perspective, From I can <laughs> I can really appreciate that. Yeah. So. <laughs> How about you, Jocelyn? I'm so excited to hear your story, right? You're a success story for us in the Hartford Public Schools, and now a freshman at Wesleyan University. So how's college different from high school? You definitely have a greater sense of responsibility. Mm. Um, you go from being in a building for say six to eight hours with your whole entire schedule planned for you to being in maybe one to three classes a day for maybe one to three hours and then you have the rest of the day to make choices of what you want to do. And mm. so you definitely learn organization. Um, you have to spend your time wisely. So basically you kind of become your own individual and in everything, every single thing you do affects you. What do you do to prepare for that? Um, I definitely, in, in high school, I tried to organize my days, but um, can you read the question? If, what do you do to prepare for yeah. that kind of responsibility, responsibility, right, that you have to take in college? Okay. Yeah, definitely in high school, I think organization is great. Mm. Um, although you're in school and, and you have your own schedule, say, set for you, when you get home, I think it's a good to think about what time is good to study. Do I study mm -hmm. best at night? Do I study best right when I get home? Because in college, that's definitely going to be important. Um, freshman year is definitely trial and error of what mm -hmm. works for you, but um, definitely Practicing that in high school will mm. help you transition better to college when it comes to the free time that you have. That's good advice. What's your favorite thing about college? Um, let's see. I definitely like the choice of like classes. I like mm. to be able to walk around. I like to explore classes, especially Wesleyan. They're very liberal. It's a liberal arts yeah. school, so I can kind of choose the different classes I want. Mm. So I have many different choices. I learn many different things um, outside of, say, biochemistry, my major. Yep. And so I'm, I think I've become a more well-rounded student. So I, I love that part, the choice. That's fantastic. Yeah. Jasmine, tell us about your internship. It sounds so interesting, the <laughs> EV project for Hartford. Tell us about it and how'd you get it? OK, so that's actually my second internship I've had at my school. and. This internship, I'm the project lead for the internship actually, and what we do is we chose an EV power charging station based upon the grant that we received. And we chose it based upon budget and things like that. And then after that, we went to the installing process. We learned how to, what went into um, placing an EV power start charging station at your school and things like that. So we had to talk with contractors to see what contractors would actually do the project for us. We talked to different EV charging station companies that sold their product and which mm -hmm. ones would give us a better deal. We also talked with electricians and other people of that sort. So yeah, and how I got it, um, when I heard about it at the beginning of the school year, actually my first day of school, I heard about it and I actually voiced my opinion to my principal, Mr. Mays, that I wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. So that's how. So you advocated for yourself. You <laughs> yes, just jumped at an opportunity. Yes, I did. It sounds incredible. I, I need a project manager on my team. Will you come work for me? <laughs> I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have you. Um, 
tell us about why you think internship experiences are important for students. Well, personally, from my experience, I believe that internship, having an internship helped me a lot throughout my high school career. I started with one at the Hartford Parking Authority my mm, junior year, wow. which turned into a part-time job this year mm. since I did an amazing job. And what it did, it helped me look at colleges in a different way. It helped me look at the business world in a different way. Mm. When I first went to my internship, I told my boss, Eric, that I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And so what he did was he had me sit down with a bunch of lawyers every oh, time wow. we had to meet with lawyers. And basically, I had conversations with lawyers, and I figured out that. That was not something I wanted to do. <laughs> so I had to look at a new career, and they helped me throughout the whole way, um, way figuring out everything that I liked and disliked and different career paths. And so my internship actually helped me choose a career path. Yeah. It helped me look at colleges because going in, I knew I wanted to go to college. I was mm -hmm. already a college-bound student, but there's things about colleges that you don't know, like a safety school, what's a reach school, which yeah. is a school that's perfect for you. So also the people at my job helped me figure out where I fit on each yeah. aspect and how that will help me when I choose a college to apply to. I think those are really important <laughs> lessons learned, right? And I've heard other students speak of their internship experiences the way you have, right? It not only helps you decide what you want to do, but you sometimes also learn like what you don't want to do <laughs> for your career, like you learned about being a lawyer. You know, you'd say, something really interesting. You're like, I knew I was going to college, right? That I was a college-bound student. What made you think that? Well, ever since I actually started going to school as a kindergartner, I already knew mm -hmm. I wanted to go to college. When mm -hmm. people ask me, what do you want to do when you grow up? I would say, I want to go to college. So mm -hmm. that was my idea as a career when I was younger. And as yeah. I grew older, I still kept that in mind. I knew I wanted to go to college. So that's basically made me focus on my schooling, mm -hmm. more importantly, because from a little kid, I knew I wanted to go to college. So I knew I had to focus throughout high school, middle school, mm -hmm. and elementary school if I wanted to go to a nice college. You're such a role model for our young mm -hmm. students who are watching. So thank you for sharing that. Shamar, talk to us about how the financial aid process has been for you. Again, that's a theme, right? We're hearing around yeah. this table, and when I talk to other students throughout the system, you know, it seems like it's such an important process of applying for college and making the decision about which college you want to attend. So how has the financial aid process been for you? <laughs> it's been hard. It's yeah. been hard. Yeah. It has. Um, your first time doing it, um, understanding the documents. Um, actually, I messed up on my financial aid because mm. I was trying to be independent and um, I, I filled out the... Um, the wrong one mm. for the wrong year. Okay. So I got help from my instructional coach and she helped me, you know, fill out the right FAFSA and get everything in order. But even though it's hard, yeah. it's a process that that's mm. it has to be done. Like mm. it is important and once you finish it, you feel relieved, like you feel relaxed and getting it done early cuz mm. the earlier you do it, the more money you get and when you get the more when you get the most money you, you feel comfortable with the schools and the options that you have. Yeah, I think that's great advice uh, for people who are thinking about it. I think, you know, not everyone realizes that that's a part of the process, right, of, a, mm -hmm. of applying to college. So what advice would you have to other students who might find themselves in your situation? Like, this was hard. I made a mistake. You know, what, what do you do then? Who do you turn to? What would you tell your fellow students? Always talk to teachers. Um, mm -hmm. Find someone in your school that you can talk to, that you feel comfortable talking to. And if they don't know what to do, then somebody that they know might know what to do. Mm. So network and you'll keep trying. Don't yeah. give up. I think that's great advice. And I, I really am so impressed with what I hear from all of you. Like you're very strong in advocating for yourselves and you know making sure that your voice is out there um, and you get the help that you need and you follow the path, right, that you've determined is the path that you wanna take. So really, congratulations. Tanya, mm -hmm. your turn to talk about colleges you were accepted at. Now <laughs> we know UConn, right, yeah. is your destination. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, what, what was your process like? You know, where were you accepted? And you mentioned you're a first generation yep. student. This is your first in your family yeah. to go to college. Yeah. So talk 
from that perspective yeah. as well. Yeah, I was accepted into uh, UConn, yeah. uh, Central Connecticut State, Eastern Connecticut State, mm -hmm. University of St. Joseph, and Augustana College in Rock Island, Illinois. Mm -hmm. So um, my mom, we, we are not uh, natives of America, so this is an extreme process to us. We're in Wonderland <laughs> <laughs> at one point. It's and even hard when you grow up here yeah. and are from here. Yeah. It's complicated, yeah. so yeah. I, you know, I, yeah. I can't I mean, even imagine. It's a whole other, you know, different yeah. kind of experience. Yeah. Keeping in touch with my guidance counselor mm -hmm. and my college and career specialist and being in every program possible that helps me to bridge my gaps mm -hmm. and understand stuff and my mom there with me that was re really important and you know going through the process i mean i was new to everything yeah. as as many of my friends were mm -hmm. and sitting down with my counselors having her doors open going in saying i need you to really understand this to me and find a as a uh, uh, richard said a really good relationship with teachers and stuff like mm -hmm. that is very important so that really helped me and 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 making my final decision it was not hard at the end of the day so i was okay. really happy about that yeah, that's yeah. that's great advice mm -hmm. and congratulations yes. again on mm -hmm. your on your journey Thank uh, you. and path. Yeah. What are you going to major in? Um, biology. Okay. I'm very interested in how the body works, and I like the behind the scenes. I'm not a camera girl. I'm behind. You the are camera. today. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I like the behind the scenes. I'm very interested in what goes on at the back. So mm -hmm. biology in, in class that sparked something in in me, and I said mm -hmm. this is what I wanted to do. And I knew from I knew from a child I wanted to uh, be a doctor, but I never knew what it is that like what really drew me mm. to this medicine thing. And I found biology, and I said, "Oh, this is it. Oh, <laughs> this is uh, it." So yeah, it's so great when you find your passion. Yes, it is, right. and it's really easy. You know, with, when you know what you want to do, you work towards it. Mm -hmm. And then when you're, you're kind of confused or, or you not know, you're kind of all over the place. So I encourage the students to find what you really want to do, and then you work towards it. It's much easier. Yes, that yeah. that is great. Yeah. So. Jocelyn, what would you say to our graduating seniors about preparing for college? We've heard a lot of advice around the table about what to do. So what would be your advice uh, to our students who are getting ready to go off to college? You've lived through it. What would yes. you say to them? Um, well, for preparing for college, I would definitely say read. Mm -hmm. Definitely read. I, I've learned that. I didn't really think about it in high school, but you have a lot of reading in college, and so I would just, even if it's a magazine, a newspaper, a nonfiction book, or a chapter book, read a little bit outside of school. You know, it improves, it enhances your vocabulary, and you're going to be reading a lot in college, and so I, that's what I would definitely say first off. And um, I guess I would also say um, start to be responsible for yourself. You know, in high school sometimes, your teachers ask, um, your teachers help you, you ask questions, but definitely in college, that's not necessarily gonna happen. The professors are very supportive, but in the, at the end of the day, in college, it's up to you. If you need help or assistance, you have to go to the professor and, and outside of the classroom. And so you have a lot of free time, and it's also up to you on how you spend it. You can spend it, um, say, socializing, um, extracurricular activities and studying, but it's up to you to kind of organize that to figure out what kind of schedule works best for you in order for you to do well in your academics and even in say your social life mm -hmm. in college because socialization in college is also very important mm -hmm. you learn a lot about p different people and you learn a lot of, a lot about yourself mm -hmm. in college so i would definitely say that what have you learned about yourself this year um this year i think I learned that I really like people. Mm. You know, I, I've learned. <laughs> I think I've learned. Like in um, in Westling, it was definitely a culture shock. I realized mm. that I wasn't in Hartford anymore. So I guess I can't. It was like I'm not Kansas anymore. Yeah. Um, and so I learned about all different types of people. There's people from all over the world mm. in Westland, and so I learned a lot about that and a lot about interacting with different people. So that's something that also kind of drove me. To Wesley, and, and especially because there's so many different types of people. Yeah, I don't think people often think about that, right? Mm -hmm. You think about going to college, the coursework, but there are other adjustments you have to make too. Mm -hmm. So, what has been the most challenging adjustment you've had to make as you've transitioned to college? Um, I'm definitely I'm used to Hartford, and so I'm yeah. used to Pathways Academy, 300 mm -hmm. students, and I went to 2,000 students, mm -hmm. nine percent say Latino. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also first generation. And so okay. that was something to also 
kind of get used to because I didn't I I was kind of I didn't know what to do. I was kind of lost and I learned along the way, but I really appreciate it and I'm actually I'm proud to um, mm -hmm. be from Hartford and going there. I don't know any other Harvard <laughs> student so far, mm -hmm. and so I'm kind of proud to be there and show other people like I'm first generation from Hartford and I can do it just yeah. like you. And so I'm I'm really proud about that. Yeah, you should be, and yeah. we're we're proud of you and Thank what you. you've been able to accomplish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I just want to ask you one more internship question, Jasmine, because I, I think you've had such cool experiences and it's really inspirational for other students who are you know, considering um, an internship as part of their school experience in Hartford Public Schools. And we're so lucky to have such great business partners in Hartford who are giving these kind of opportunities for our students. I know an internship, uh, it really changed my life. When I was in 11th grade, I did an internship in a school. Um, and that started me on a path to becoming a teacher, and then I became a principal, and now in my dream job of a superintendent. So I know that internships really can can change lives and can change the course of your you know career, the trajectory for your career. So how is your internship informing what you want to do in college and how you've thought about the college experience? So, so we often talk about like college and career readiness and. How do you see it fitting together, the internship, and how you're thinking about college and the future? Okay, so with my first internship, that chose my career path, basically. Yes. Right, and you knew what not to do, right? <laughs> I knew what not to do, and now, since I'm going into computer engineering, what I'm actually doing at my at the Hartford Parking Authority is on the path of computer engineering. I'm mm. building a database, so oh, wow. that's on the path. So that's how you learn about careers. Mm. But colleges, um, I think it gives you experience, like it makes you responsible mm. because like as Jocelyn said, yeah, that was her advice, yeah. right? You need to be right. responsible. Yeah. And it also gives you an idea of how to interact with people because mm. before, believe it or not, I was a really shy student and <laughs> this actually brought me out of my shell and it made me interact with more people mm. and be more of a people's person. Oh, and yeah. Now you wouldn't ever believe that I'm shy. So it gives you yep. the <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> it gives you the skills that internships gives you the skills that are not taught in a classroom. Mm -hmm. And those skills, those are the skills you need to bring on with you to college, to a job, and your future. Those skills are what's really key. Yeah. Yes, it's important to learn math, science, mm -hmm. technology, English. It's important to learn all of those, but there's also skills that are not taught in a classroom that you also need to bring with you when you go to college or to a job. Yeah. And that's what internships do. Mm -hmm. And since they're offered at school, it's even better because yeah. you get your school learning that you need. And also at school, you could get the other skills that are not often taught at school. At school. I think mm -hmm. it's a great sales pitch for an internship. Yeah. <laughs> and what was really cool is it really matched what Jocelyn told us mm -hmm. about the skills that you need for college, right? right? Beyond the academic skills, right? Being responsible, knowing how to manage your time, knowing how to work with all different types of people. Mm -hmm. um, so that's fantastic. It seems okay. like it's just the right match, you know, not only to help you think about your career, but also, you know, college and, and the skills that you'll need to be successful in college and beyond. So that's great. Great to hear. So, Shamar, you've been interested, you have been in thinking about some interesting things about when you finish high school. You know, certainly you've applied to colleges, been accepted. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. But you've also been thinking about a fifth year at a college prep school. Tell me kind of why you're thinking about that and again what you would say to other students who, who may be considering that as an option after 12th grade. Okay so um, a college prep school you could go for, um, for athletics or academics. Mm -hmm. um, I'm involved in athletics. I'm on the football team mm -hmm. so originally it was that but then I started looking into prep schools and like what I saw I liked like it was different. The curriculum was different. Mm -hmm. The way how they um, taught was different. Um, and in the environment, there's kids from all around the world, all around the country at prep schools. And it's just a different experience. Mm -hmm. um, I applied for a Philip Exeter Academy. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I didn't get in. But one of my friends got in. I was very happy for him. And sure. it's like now he has the opportunity to go and make connections, network, and meet people all around the world. And mm. that's, that's what I would say about prep school. It's not about 
it's not it doesn't have to be about sports it can be about academics if you want a year to um, mature to um, have a different experience of education to to really find yourself yeah. then try it out you know some some people need that extra year for for themselves and that's what I was thinking as far as for myself like um um, I'm a mama's boy, so. <laughs> <laughs> Again, as a mom, that's good to hear. <laughs> I can't, I can't live without a home cooked meal. You know, <laughs> my mom's always there for me, yeah. so I went through that year away from my mother, away from yeah. my family, you know, to adapt to my surroundings and you know see how I would react to being in a whole different place mm -hmm. where I had to make sure everything was, you know fine yeah. and you know my mother couldn't help me nobody mm -hmm. um would be there for me it would just be me um worrying about everything and managing everything yeah you know it's something that i hadn't really thought a lot about it's an option that i hadn't really considered so thank you for sharing your thinking about that um so that other students know that you know that's a real option um if it's if it's a good fit for students as they transition from high school to college i want to ask you about the hartford promise <laughs> scholarships as well and so like what is it how do you get a hartford promise scholarship and then i'm going to ask you to speak to our middle school students uh, who are Hartford residents so that they know what they can do to prepare to be eligible for a Hartford Promise okay. scholarship? So um, the Hartford Promise is a scholarship. Um, it, I believe it's $5,000 mm -hmm. yeah. um, for four years, yeah. so it's renewable. Um, you have to be a Hartford resident, you have to be in the Hartford school system, and you have to have 93% attendance. Mm -hmm. and the Hartford Promise is, is, is something great. It helped me out a lot. Um, in colleges, like, the financial aid packages were good, mm -hmm. but knowing that I had an extra $5,000 yeah. to where I didn't have to take out loans was mm. great. So for middle schoolers, I think it's important that they start from now. They start getting organized. They start working on time management because you can't get time back. Mm. Time is something that you can't get back. Time is something that you can't buy. Mm -hmm. So you, you really need to take that time to get organized. And, you know, teachers do that. They help kids get organized. The, the student planners, mm -hmm. which in elementary school I took for granted and I never <laughs> used, and, I, you know, I just left it there on my counter. Those, those are helpful. Mm. Those are really helpful because, you know, you plan out your day, you plan you, your homework, what classes you have, and you get ready for college that way. You get ready for high school. And, you know, you might have an appointment. If you're writing down stuff like that in middle school, then when you get to high school and college, you're going to be prepared. It's just a habit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you made such a good point about the Hartford Promise Scholarship, even though you have gotten offers of financial aid, sometimes that $5,000 can make a difference, mm -hmm. right? Because you can use it for books or, you know, other school materials. So I think that's that's a good point and good advice to our middle schoolers. Like, be prepared now and, and, and get organized because you can't get your time back. I think that's such wise, wise advice. Uh, Tanya, I'm going to ask you in this last question for any last pieces of advice that you have for students yeah. that are coming up into high school or into college and particularly for those like yourself that are first generation yeah. students so any final words of advice for your fellow students yes, absolutely get into the habit of working hard because mm -hmm. <laughs> you know high school you think high school is hard i mean everyone is telling me college college is going to be a blast <laughs> so um, <laughs> working hard i that's what i did I, i've always done that you know going home time management absolutely important to just to get in that extra gap i remember taking extracurricular activities joining activities just like so in socially and academically mm -hmm. but hard work at the end of the day really made a difference for me and getting into that habit is just going to be a breeze. I think, yeah. again, that's mm -hmm. really wise, mm -hmm. wise advice. And Jocelyn, I'm going to let you have the final <laughs> word, right? Our college student, our graduate, mm -hmm. any final pieces of advice that you have for our students? Definitely. Um, just know that you can do whatever you put your mind to. When it comes mm -hmm. to college, you have a lot of free time. You Everything relies on you. Mm -hmm. The only thing that can break you is you. So you can 
if you want to say pass that test, if you want to get past that really hard class, like organic chemistry, um, <laughs> I'm gonna take, um, you can do it. You can take the time to do it. You can seek the help. Um, in college, it's not like you're alone. There's so many resources. You just have to go get it. So in college, you're going to be your only worst en enemy. So um, just, I guess, be you mm -hmm. and just do whatever you set your mind to because in college, you can do it. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you all so much. I, I, I think you can see uh, why I was so excited uh, for this show. And you are so wise beyond your years. And we're so lucky to have you as role models for the other students in our system. And I just wish you all the best as you finish out your time here in HPS and you continue to have success um, at university. So thank you so much for appearing on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We thank our guests, our amazing students, for their time and energy in sharing their valuable knowledge and wisdom about their journeys to college. Please visit our website to find helpful resources for college and career, and to see our high school's list of college acceptances at hartfordschools.org. Thanks again for tuning into the show, and we'll see you next time.